Okay, it's just to show that... Fred, let's see if I can get this going for you. All right, so this is the video you're asking about these two items here. Um, this is the post-tensioning um, rods that go down. It's equivalent to these, these guys here. This, these are caps on top of these. No caps are visible here for this project. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. Coming over to this. This is the angle of the photograph that you, uh, from that video, now I'll use my photography skills on you. When I zoom in uh, with using a long lens, say if you use a 50 millimeter lens compared to a 600 millimeter lens, a uh, 600 millimeter lens will make things look like they're together. This and this lose depth of field. Um, so they look like they're right on top of it. It looks like this guy could touch out and reach out and touch it and it looks like it's almost on his behind. In reality, it's uh, significantly, hugely different. You know, it's 30, 40 feet away. It's actually a good lens to use if you're trying to, uh, if you can get far enough back and you want someone to look like they're in the city when they're not, you would uh, step back far enough, zoom in with the lens and it would make them two, the two of them look, at, look, look like they're together. Um, like you look like you're at the Statue of Liberty when you're really on the island, uh, on, on the land. All right, just a thought on that. Now, I jump over to, so here's what I have here. Those are the caps. This is jackhammering. Look at this. Clearly jackhammering. This is the one that they uh, tensioned already. I've seen this in a few images. Uh, let's talk about my white cap. My white cap, it can get around. You see this thing down here on the ground. You see it up here, and you see it here. Uh, let's get to the white cap. White cap. White cap. Really? There we go. White cap. Now the white cap's over here. They just seem to move it just perfectly each time. But with this image here, we're here now. Um, no concrete inside the uh, uh, trans, uh, longitudinal post-tension cables. Uh, those appear to be longitudinal because of the bundle. Now here's the back of this guy. Now they probably used, you know, now, now that we have more data, they probably used a uh, coupling to get onto, to connect onto this. This allowed them the extra rod. So this rod here, this red is not present there. Would love to see it in the previous one. This uh, is probably all an extension um, up until where, I don't know, right about there I'm guessing is where the coupling is, right here. See that little difference in elevation of the rod as it comes and then it changes. So from here, as I said in one of my video to here is the extension piece. And so we could figure out if we could only figure out where the base of this was, we'd be able to figure out some things here, how much they elongated for sure, because this part came to an end. So we'll know, we can figure out how much movement took place compared to the rod, compared to connections here, and of course the report, if they report uh, fairly. I won't use the word honestly, how's that? This is an interesting piece. This is probably part of this tooling they placed up there that happened to stay where it is, as it went up and down along with that darn... Uh, what a jug. All right, so we have the, uh, again, the white cap. Going away from the white cap, let's drop that down. Back to the white cap. White cap, white cap. Oh, someone said, uh, asked something about well, whose cap is it? You know, sometimes supervisors wear white caps. We don't know, VSL might all wear white caps. Um, nobody honors the color caps, mostly. So again, this is the, uh, this is this. And one more image of that for you is here. So here it is here. And I was going to put this in another video referencing cracks. But now, uh, Fred, I'm doing this for you because you're awesome, man. You you give me some great donations. So you get your own private video, if you will. So then we've got the cracks. And anyone else who donates to me gets a private video, whatever they ask, if I, if I can't answer real fastly in a type format. So here's some breaking away. The two of them broke away. This is that direction there. These cables are here and here. Oh, I wish I could show you this one over here um, where it's collapsed. I don't have that image handy. Uh, well, you can clearly see that they're more post-tension. So if you guys Google images, you'll go through here and you'll see that there's a clear... Uh, you know what? I'll put it down in low below this video. I'll put a, uh, one of my images in there and I'll be able to attach it. And you'll see that below here... Um, you'll see this thing crushed. One of these crushed clearly indicating there is no 
post-tension cables inside of it, which we know because well, we look at the end of the structure. I guess they're trying to see if they can access anybody down there. Um, okay. So then we go to this. Let's jump on to accidental thought. Are these are school colors? I did look this up. You know, they do have blue on the banners. And then I sort of let it go. But I was going to do a whole video on this blue being no way this blue is part of an accidental photography thing where the, the uh, color balance is called, call, it's called, you create this blue here because it's inconsistent. You have purple down here. You, said you have some purple here. So it was done purposely, I think, that you add this blue here. Now, the question is, was it an attempt to conceal these nodes that we did not know to look for um, when they were transporting it? Who cares? You know, they just put an ABC bridge in. Who Nobody thought anything of it. And nobody would have thought anything of it. That is that is a huge amount gone, right? Um, the other thing is, uh, while I'm here, let's just touch on this. I uh, I keep getting sent to forums, and I do. You know, I really respect you guys who send it, send that stuff. So I, I respect you to go look at your comments. And here's my comments, since you guys are obviously watching the videos. They're now trying to, the forums are leaning on no longer, some of them are still stuck on 11, 12 shear, but they're moving on to uh, loads, low paths, and everything in, in the node where I've always been. Um, which, I, you know, I'm glad. They're trying to calculate it. It's, it's a monster. But let's just think of this. There, this is the cable, right? This long yellow line. And in this cable, as we think of the cable state bridge, as you lay, as you put uh, your uh, loads on it, it can flex down. It can cause a deflection, a deviation in this cable. The problem is if you cause a deviation in this cable and inside this bridge, you cause a deviation in the concrete, which means you cause a break in the concrete. These, as we see, are not post-tensioned. Let me get it. Let me get to that. Where'd you go again? Great. My image. I lost my image right there. As we see, these are not. They're post-tension, but they're not full of grout. So there's play around these uh, these white um, ducts, and that allows the bridge to also flex. And if it flex, grout would have would have limited its ability to flex. Um, when I say flex, I'm just being using common terms, but flex is fair. We can say bow, you can say uh, um, hog, you can say <laughs> camber, you can say whatever you want. You can say uh, whatever you like to get there, you know, deflection. Ultimately, it's deflection. So this, the grouting would, it would have limited the deflection that where it would have first have to cause the, uh, these cables to elongate. To, to have, for these cables to elongate, they would have to meet the maximum amount of kips on it um, and for it to first start elongating. And that would not have been exceeded per the engineer's specs. Um, he wouldn't, I'm sure he would not allow, allow flexing to go up and down this bridge. Uh, single flexing, meaning just in the canopy alone, along without the bottom deck being party to it, you know, both going together. And if you do one you, without the other, you don't have your your uh, symmetry in the bridge, your your balance. And if you guys that might appreciate this a little more, you don't have your yin and your yang. Okay, so uh, you don't have your balance. So these can go together, top and bottom, a little bit of you know t t together. But remember, we have to be ADA compliant. So with that said, you can't have this flexing too much in up and down position in the middle, changing your pitch over a quarter inch per foot. Uh, one inch, one inch, one inch ramp. So we could consider this a ramp. So you can go as much as one inch per foot if you consider this a ramp, but it's a walkway. So you can't consider a ramp. So back to the ADA, I would say this falls under a walkway. So now they did do the elevation here. If you see the elevations, they made one end of the bridge higher, other end of the bridge lower. That's order, that's default, making it a ramp, if you will. All right, the water, I think, running to, I don't know, that end or was, yeah. This end, uh, this bridge is flipped around. It doesn't really matter to me uh, at this time because they never tied the two together. So they're trying to, all these forms, are trying to figure this out. You know, how do you do this? And that's where I told you you've got chaos mathematics. It's just craziness. You've got these crossing each other here. Um, you've got one when you, when you change the loads. Now this becomes more intention. So this is even creating more of a load here. 
I did not do the other video. I'm not going to post it, but I'll just give you a quick idea. You also have the dead weight of the 16 inch pipes on top of these nodes. That dead weight is now creating a, uh, a uh, load point at the top of these nodes, which have to be addressed, which will be shared as dead weight for the, uh, into the uh, bottom of the deck, the bottom uh, cord, if you will, and also the top cord helping to distribute uh, the top cord in the, I'm sorry, let me clarify this. It'll be distributed in the top cord in the node area. As the dead load's on here, it's not here. It's on, it's, just, it's, a, it's a point load. It's going on top of each one of these uh, diagonals. We'll call them diagonals. That's diagonal two. It's not quite an upright, but it is, right? This is an upright, and that's an upright. And then we got these diagonals. So it's a point load here that is most of it's going down here which would be crazy you know because we have all this plumbing here that it seems like wow did they really calculate this right it seems like it was a toy that somebody was playing around with it just seems like it has so much built-in um, immediate failure obsolescence is just a minnow of uh, something that, that that this seems so basic to me um, basic and failure I hope it's basic and failure I don't mean any disrespect to uh, to anyone. Maybe it's really a complicated failure. Moving on, we have this node again that's been powered into and we've got the color by chance being blue. You know, no harm done, no harm, no foul if this never was seen. But clearly, and I'm going to get rid of this image now, clearly we have and it's at the bottom. Jack hammering inside here jack hammerings inside there and again that black cap you see uh fred that's a cap that goes over there that's the rest of the blister um blister the rest of the uh trumpet if you will the uh part that anchors in there these as i recall are eight by twelve these steel plates and they're one behind each other in elevation one up one down um and then there's some breakage and there's your uh, lanyard for the uh, uh, guy working on the bridge, and here's a continuation of it. A few people said that they were anchored into here. I think this is just the, uh, it, mostly this crew just wrapping this around here. Although in one of my videos that I didn't post, I said that uh, when this popped, maybe this spun around a circle and was able to get one whip of the cable around. Uh, I didn't see any real data to snatch out of that, so I let it ride. Um, I mean, they keep doing this, right? Well, what can we see that's still there? Well, we still see a dividing something here. It appears to be uh, reinforcement and no concrete on it. Um, with that said, do we think that somebody put concrete around here and they uh, reinforcement? They let it go through here and then through this side, and they say, "Well, we just no, come on, come on." This is just this is just ridiculous to me. Um, so you know, you can find so many failures with so many different things here, lanyard for the worker. Um, not this worker, the worker was on the bridge. So the, uh, you find, and there's the other second lanyard. I don't know the third one. I guess the guy's underneath the, um, I don't know. Did he fight a head injury over here? Or was that a guy, a guy get crushed in a truck? We're not clear on that, are we? But this is a, this is not quite, um, jackhammering either. If anybody's jackhammered, this up here would be jackhammering. This is, you know, jackhammer is not going to get you this nice curve going down here. So. I'm going to have to introduce another tooling, you know, possibly a core drill bit, core drill, core drill bit, you know, drilling down and, and popping cores. It's a, you know, one and two, one and a half, two inch core bit. And then cleaning it up with the uh, jackhammer, cleaning it up, you know, getting in more access with the jackhammer. That's my thinking. Could this be a shadow? It sure can be because, you know, hey, it could be a shadow. So, um, and, but jackhammering this out how would you do that i mean so uh, there was something in there i think maybe foam i don't know maybe they put newspaper in there to, and then they and then they put the concrete on there and jackhammer and that may sound like a joke right but you know you'll be amazed at what people think of at the last minute to keep the job going anybody's poor concrete you know that when you're running close on that concrete by two feet they start reaching over and grabbing rubble to fill in there and then capping the rubble with the uh some concrete now, any real concrete kinds will appreciate that statement. Anybody else will troll it. All right, so um, 
There's the machine again and the hydraulic thing. It looks like it's pegged on the 100% uh, open. 100%, you know, t it's pretty much to about 10,000 PSI. All right. Why reinforcement? Why, uh, why um, post-tension cables as a first to um, just reinforcement rebar? Well, the post-tension cables can reach a, a higher failure rate than rebar, reinforcement can. And also the end caps are how you can uh, hold this whole thing together. You know, it's, 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 it's the system now that people are in love with. Okay, now here it is here, the last video image. This will be the one laying down. This is an interesting duck. Who is it? Who is this? Who's this guy? Just after they start demoing, that's the one that you just saw This pulled over? I think so. If we look here at this cutout right here, and then we go back to um, this cutout here. Slide it over. Right about here. I'm, I'm, I like to lean towards it that way. That's this one. And we pull it down and over. We've got the, you know, the symmetry going on. So I like to say, you know, this design, this feature here, because they all have a little bit of different shape based on their different angles, is the same one that you're questioning me about, Fred. So wrapping it up, um, that's what you see there. And then the sequence of images, here it is here. And that's the underside of it, cables inside of it. This is the plate. This is the connect right about here, I believe, is the uh, where they pull these off. Then we saw where they where they pull the caps off. I'm gonna end this right here, hand this right when I do the summation right here. Oh, gotta show you this then. All right, again, to get rid of number 11, 12 shear. 11, 12 shear through the bottom. All right, well, all these connections are still here. It sheared through it magically, but did no damage. I think I talked about in a previous video. Might as well beat it up again. All right, where are we? Where are we? I guess I dumped it. Nope. All right. So then, staying on continuity, the uh, here are the caps. They pull the caps off. Once you pull the cap off, you have access to about this much left, apparently. Um, you thread on your extension piece. We'll come to this picture. And right about there is the extension. It's a coupling. Coupling would look similar to this, a different version made by the proprietary company VSL. And drag again. Would look similar to this. Look at this, this, that, see that thread? And then see this connection here? It would be something like that, their own version of it that they can, ta they can take it. This obviously is a nut and a coupling combination, as you can see. Um, Maybe for adjustments, who knows? I don't know the intent. So then we thread it on there, we add our connection, we start hydraulic jacking, we know they went this far as connecting it. The PSI looks like they went as far as um, going forward. They already jack hammered into this one. We've got this magical helmet that's always getting in my way. I can't get inside that, any, find any images inside there because the magical helmet, which we see here, is always blocking that first one. There's no image of that inside there that I could find. And then we come back to this wrap up on. And I think I just enlarged it is all I did. And unenlarging it, there we go. And then they made the connection and they started pushing against the plate. The plate is not present here. So we can assume the plate is still inside there. With that said, that means somewhere down here, apparently, that this did break somewhere down. Down the line, whether it broke, whether it broke during the collapse, that's my theory, it broke during the collapse, that this was totally intact, that it caused a crack in the canopy, which then transferred the loads all differently. No longer could the transverse, the longitudinal post-tension cables work in this canopy. And since they can no longer work in this canopy, the, that crack in the canopy, the loads transferred down Number 11, which it was designed to take under, under this layout compression, and it um, buckled at the very top, cracking fully. Maybe that's where cracks were also. At that point, um, uh, the loads transferred, the whole deck just transferred down, it transferred loads down 10. 10 found the failure between here and here at this point. Perhaps, uh, you know, one of the things you could probably say is it was so much under tension that it broke there. And you know what? It, that, that's not really 
that's not really the uh, a, a super concern. It's, it is structurally to wonder, you know, about it. Finally, uh, you know, these are amazing. These, uh, some of these have um, post tensioning in them, rods, and some of them are designed to be under tension. So if people are saying, how can it be under tension, compression rather, and yet it's a uh, tension member. Um, so uh, let's see. Let me just do my math in my head. So this one, I think they're impl people imply it's supposed to be under compression. Um, wait a minute. So a lot of people are saying compression, tension, compression, tension, compression, tension, compression, tension, compression. Oh, wait a minute. That puts it under tension. It doesn't work out. All right. So as you can see, if you go with this something, compression, tension, it doesn't work out. C CT, CT, or force, you can go force. You can do whatever you want to do in your abbreviations. Uh, so every alternating one, compression, tension. Doesn't work out, does it? This is compression. So that means this is more designed... Um, as I said before, that perhaps these change directions, that these were designed to push more outwards here. As long as you get balance, there are structures where, where they have these just in this direction and these just in this direction without any uh, uprights in them. And that's specifically United Embers uh, study did that with a 30-foot sample of a truss member. I'm wondering if this was copying that and this was used to, as camber, if you will, this member here when you put... And under, uh, when, imagine this, if I bolt this, if this would not go down, and, and I was able to bolt this together, this would stop this from separating, the top and the bottom canopy from separating. So when the loads finally apply to this, it's a roundabout circle. This tries to pull down, it pulls the top. If it tries to pull the top, the loads come down to the, uh, the compressive member here. So it's, it's, it's going to defeat itself. One's... Um, balancing out the other one. Why it's so important in that thinking is that it keeps, again, ADA requirements. You can't have this bridge going up and down without staying within the guidelines of the basically one inch and per quarter, quarter inch side slope and one inch um, um, ramp from end to end. So as you imagine walking down your sidewalk, typically not on hills, you know, there's issues. Typically, if, they, if they're going to build a new development, it's going to be one inch um, per foot as you walk down the walkway and as you walk the, from the walkway left to right as you're walking down the walkway you're the narrower side the four foot side if you will you're looking left to right that's only going to be about a quarter inch per foot cross slope to let the water run off that's it so that's pretty much the ADA standards for for that uh, of course there's surface problems and uh, things like that and obstructions that you'd have to be wary of with uh, the ramp handicap ramp which would come up here handicap uh, accessible or wheelchair stuff, which would be elevator accessible. Stopping this video because I, I just will keep on going, won't I? All right, thanks guys for watching and, you know, I really appreciate you. Appreciate you. How do I get out of this darn thing now? How do I get out without editing? So...